Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome to the next video in the setting up a home music studio course. In this video, we're going to talk about microphones. So microphones. At this stage, part of the bare essentials, I'm going to assume that everybody's going to need a microphone. Now, there is a chance that you won't need one. Some people may be looking at using mainly uh, MIDI-based keyboards, virtual instruments, or electric guitars that plug directly into the PC using amp simulators. If you're one of those people, then when you get to the end of the video, you obviously can just put down that you're not going to get a microphone, you don't need one, and you can then move on. But for everybody else, I'm assuming that you are looking at getting a microphone for your recording purposes. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So lots of instrumentation and vocals, etc., require some form of way of getting the audio into the computer. Now we've talked about the PCs themselves, the software, the audio interfaces, but to get into the audio interface, you need some sort of connectivity and in this case, we're talking about a microphone. Now, a lot of people have probably used microphones, seen microphones, there's lots of varying types around, lots of different styles, shapes, brands, everything else. Generally, there's three types of microphones out on the market that you're gonna be looking at for your home music studio. They are dynamic, condenser or capacitor, depending on which country you're in, and ribbon microphones. Now, Straight off the bat, I'm going to say that mi ribbon microphones are generally considered to be a luxury item, and it's probably something we're gonna look at further down the track purchasing if you feel you need it. But for general day-to-day -day bare essentials, it's not gonna be the one that I recommend first off. The ones I'm gonna be recommending and looking at is generally gonna be the dynamic or the condenser capacitor style. So which one you choose is going to depend mainly on what you're going to be recording. Now, I'm going to give you some general guidelines of what these microphones are used for, but keep in mind that these are not rules, they are not set in stone, and any of these microphones can be used to almost record any of these things. They're just going to give a different sound and a different vibe and you need to know how to use them. But we will go through the basic guidelines of what most people use the microphones for and why that is. All right, so let's start with the dynamic microphone. Okay, this is an example of a dynamic microphone. It is one of the most common out there. It is uh, reasonably priced and it is the Shure SM57. So you possibly may have heard of this. You may also not have heard of it, but it is very popular, especially in recording electric guitars. The major advantages of a dynamic microphone is, and again, this is one dynamic microphone. There's plenty of others, different shapes and different styles that have different purposes. Okay, this one here is renowned for working on amplifiers with electric guitars, but it's also commonly used on snare drums and other instruments like that, and can be used on vocals if need be, and anything. But for general rules, I generally say that a dynamic microphone is used to record louder style instruments, okay? They're very, they take a lot of power, they can absorb a lot, they don't overblow, and loud instruments can be put into these very easily. So when we get into the recording course, we're going to go into more detail about how to use each of these and plug them in and what they need. But from a general point of view, a dynamic microphone does not need uh, the negative 48 volt phantom power. It can just run straight with a uh, XLR connector straight into your audio interface. And as I said, it doesn't require external power. They're usually sort of a lot less sensitive and that's why they can take loud instruments. So they're not the sort of mic that you're gonna have at a distance, you know, far away from you 
and pick up the sound. They're very much a close mic, so if you're gonna sing, it's pretty much what you put in front of your mouth. It's a dynamic mic is what they would generally use on a live stage for a vocalist so that it doesn't pick up all the background noise and the crowd and primarily focuses on directly what is right up against its mouth. So that's the advantage of these and that's exactly why they use them on guitar amplifiers too because you put this up against the speaker or close to the speaker of your amplifier and record your guitar through this microphone. Okay, so the other type of microphone that I'm going to recommend is a condenser capacitor and that looks something like this. Now again, they come in all shapes, sizes and looks. So don't necessarily assume that something this shape is one. Uh, always look at the specs and make sure they are. These are very sensitive microphones, okay? They're very much used in studios for vocals. They can be used for guitar amps if need be. They would be used as room mics to capture ambience. They can be used on drums if done properly. And they're very good at acoustic style instruments like acoustic guitars or, you know, double basses, things like that. Anything that's sort of more acoustic and uh, not so much plugged in can be recorded with these because they are very sensitive but they will also pick up a lot of the room so they can pick up a lot of noise if you don't have a great room and things like that. Now these do require the negative 48 volt phantom power so that is a feature that needs to be on the audio interface and pretty much all of them do have that if they have a mic input and it's something that needs to be turned on. So we'll go into detail on that in the recording phase as I said, but it's just something you need to be aware of because you don't want to turn on that phantom power on mics that don't need it because you can blow some of them up. Uh, but if you don't turn it on for a mic like this, you won't get any sound at all. It just won't work. So as I sort of said, this is the sort of mic that's used a lot for vocals. So you'll see these in studios, you know, set up on a mic stand and the singer singing into it. Generally, you don't need to be right up in it like this. It's not going to be used in a live performance because it will pick up too much of the background sound because it is extremely sensitive and picks up everything everywhere. So it's great in a studio that's very isolated, clean, and low noise and it can pick up a great amount of details you know so this is how they get their vocals really crisp and very detailed every nuance every little spit sound everything that you want you can get with one of these whereas a dynamic is less uh, detailed like that and has to be really right up in your face to get it but you could sing with this you know a little fair bit away and still get a great sound coming out of it so, and the other one I mentioned is a ribbon microphone. Now, this is an example of a ribbon microphone, and you might think that it looks pretty much the same as the condenser one, which, you know, it does, but inside it doesn't. It actually has what they refer to as a ribbon. Now, these, again, come in very different shapes, sizes, and price, and everything else. Now, these are usually a bit darker in sounding. They're not usually something, unless you're really good at uh, recording and you know what you're looking for, they're not usually used as your primary microphone. They will be used as an additional microphone. So if you're recording your guitar amp, you might have your dynamic microphone on and you'll also use a ribbon, which will give you a darker sound, a nice thicker sound to just add extra weight to it. Uh, some people do use it for vocals as well. Um, but it is very delicate. It does not require the 48 volt phantom power. And to be honest, if you plug it in and turn that on, you will very much likely blow this up. This is extremely sensitive. And this is why I call it a luxury item. They are very easy to break. The ribbon can tear. And not only do they tear from, you know, you don't want to drop them or anything else, but they're not great necessarily for vocals without protection or loud noises because the wind from your voice can tear the ribbon. So you have to be very careful with these and, and that is exactly why I'm saying that it is a luxury item and not something I would jump into straight away.
Now on top of the type of microphone, there's also different shapes or patterns of microphones. Now when I say patterns, I'm not talking about the look. Obviously there's tons of different looks of microphones and everything else, but there's a pattern which is the actual way that the microphone picks up the audio. So the four major types of patterns are cardioid, omnidirectional, hypercardioid, and a figure of eight or bi-directional. So generally when we're talking with a dynamic microphone or even a condenser for vocals, you're probably looking at a cardioid. And if you look at the shape of it, usually with the center of the circle in the picture, that is where the microphone is. And then you'll see the little sort of bubble coming out and that is coming out the front. So the point of the microphone there is that it's picking up sound from the front of the microphone, but it's not picking up from the back. Now, if you have an omnidirectional, it's picking up in an entire 360 degrees. So if you were recording vocals from here, not only would it be picking up your voice, but it would be picking up noise from the back of the microphone as well. And that sort of goes for, the, you'll see the hypercardioid is sort of mainly at the front, tiny bit at the back, but it's narrow at the front. And then there's the figure of eight, which is very good if you want to do a stereo type pickup or if you are doing sort of like, a, let's say a bluegrass or something and you have two people that want to stand, one on each side of the microphone and sing and play, it can be useful for that, but it can also be useful as a room mic in somewhere to pick up sound from two different directions. Now, the figure of eight, as opposed to the omnidirectional, while it picks up the front of the back, it removes or isolates the sound from the side. So you really are focusing front and back only and not the sides. So most people are probably going to be dealing daily with a cardioid style where it's picking up from the front. You know, that's why we always place the microphone in a certain direction. You point the front at the person or the front at the instrument or the front at the amp, that sort of thing, because that's what you're picking up. You're not generally going to be buying the other microphones day one. They're going to be items that you may pick up later or you may never pick up because you may never have a need for those. So generally a cardioid is going to be the most common that you're going to see. Now when we get into recording, there's going to be a lot of things about placements of microphones because while each microphone has a different sound, has a different style, and you know, I said ribbons, how darker, that sort of thing, placement of the microphone on the instrument or on the vocals is also going to have a major impact. You know, common practice with an acoustic guitar is where you put that microphone compared to the sound hole in the guitar will change how deep it is or how tinny it is or how much finger noise you pick up. Same with your guitar amp, you know, the placement on the speaker, the closer you are to the cone, the more high pitched and brittle it is, the further away, the darker it gets. Even though there's no rules about microphones and you know there's common practices and you can do whatever you like really to get the sound that you want, if, if you are looking for me to make a guided uh, sort of call for you, here's where I would probably start as Bare Essentials. If you are recording vocals, I would be looking at a condenser microphone as I showed you. And if I was looking at a recording acoustic guitar, I would probably go with that. If I'm looking at recording electric guitars with an amp and a speaker, I would be looking at the dynamic microphone. And if I'm looking at recording drums, my suggestion is to get a specific drum pack of microphones. Okay, they're reasonably priced. You get them in a bundle. You can get five packs or seven packs of microphones and they give you a combination of the right microphones for the right uh, part of the drum. So you'll have a specially designed mic for the kick, another one for the snare and some for the toms and maybe some room mics if you, uh, overhead mics if you get the seven mic kit. So that's my recommendation for drums. Now you can buy each microphone individually for drums if you want to experiment and you are really invested in that style of thing. But for me, if you want simple 
and you want to get started straight away, go and look at the drum kit packs. Now, the price of the microphone. There is so much scope and variance in price. And again, it's going to come down to your budget and what you can afford. But here's some key things that generally get talked about. All right, these, if you go on certain sites and you look at professional studios, they're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on these microphones. But from a home music studio, you're going to sort of notice the difference in a few spots, okay? So anything that's sort of $100 below is going to be a really cheap mic. And while it might be all you can afford, and if it is, then, then try it but I think you'll be looking to upgrade quick. The difference between a $100 and a $500 mic will be a massive change, okay? There's a really big change in quality between a hundred and 500. But from 500 up to something like 10 grand, the difference is gonna start to become even smaller. Now, to trained professionals that do this day in, day out in recording, very expensive albums and things that are making millions of dollars, they will notice the difference and they will invest in those mics. But for your home music studio, you're gonna have so many other problems in your room and so many other difficulties. The detail that you're gonna gain from spending that much money is going to be very, very small. Now, even for professional studios, if that microphone, that, that Shure SM57 that is used quite commonly on guitar amplifiers, is used on in professional recording studios. It is a hundred dollar microphone. That's all that one costs, a hundred dollars. So I would be budgeting, if I was you, between a hundred and five hundred dollars for a microphone for your home music studio. Anything above that, unless you have a real need for it or a specific reason why you need that more expensive mic than five hundred dollars, then, you know, just really consider it, think about why. You know, it's fine if you have a real good reason for it, but don't think just because somebody on some forum said, yeah, you're better off getting this mic. That might not be the case. You know, the difference between that and another one may be so small that you won't even notice the difference because your skill level at recording with that mic is gonna be so low that you may get bad results regardless. All right, so if you have any questions about microphones or what you should get for your instruments, etc., or anything for your home music studio, please ask them in the comments. Happy to help. Again, I want to guide you all through the process here and make sure that you're looking at the right stuff and you're going to get the right gear for your home music studio. Now, again, as always, it's your turn now. Go over to the PDFs and uh, fill out the sheets. Do some research online. As usual, look for the microphones. Think about what you need, what microphone type you want, and what you're going to be recording, and write that down in your worksheets. Get it ready for purchasing and lock it in. And while you're doing that, I will see you in the next video.